So welcome to another session of control system. So today we are going to look at uh, the transfer function of uh, thermal systems. And as we know, the transfer functions of thermal systems are based on heat balances. So let's look at uh, a, a way of example, by a way of example, on how we can get uh, the transfer function of mechanical systems. So consider a system, uh, just as we said, we are going to look at an example. So this is an example whereby you can consider uh, a jacketed container that is used uh, to heat a, a liquid. Uh, and the mixture uh, is uh, always used. The mixture is the styra that will be used in order to maintain the uniform temperature throughout the liquid. Uh, the input of this is uh, the jacket, the jacket temperature, which is uh, theta J, and then we also have uh, the output, which is the liquid temperature, and that is uh, theta L. And also, you'll find that uh, in this case, we can let, we can now define what we are going to use in order to derive our uh, transfer function, where M is going to be the mass, or the, the liquid mass, uh, theta L, is going to be the liquid temperature, and uh, theta J being uh, the jacket temperature. So you'll find that uh, when you talk about this, then uh, the input uh, is actually the, the jacket temperature, which is theta J, and the output is the liquid temperature, which is theta L. So in this case, maybe we can define uh, the input. Uh, we can talk of the input as the jacket temperature theta J. So in this case, we can say input is the jacket temperature, which is theta J, and then the output is the liquid temperature theta L. Output is liquid temperature theta L. So that is uh, now what we have. The, and then you'll, know, you'll get that uh, from the equations of the heat balances, the amount of heat or we can talk of a change in Q, we can talk of amount of heat as change in Q, the amount of heat, the amount of heat, which we can talk of as delta Q, uh, the amount of heat, which is the delta Q, uh, transferred to the liquid, usually depends on the resistance R. So this one depends, it depends on resistance R, usually depends on resistance, depends on resistance, R, it depends on the resistance R, uh, and uh, the resistance R is actually as a result of the, uh, the wall between the steam and the liquid. And in that case now, the temperature difference, the temperature difference now, we can talk of the temperature difference, temperature difference will now be given by, the temperature difference will now be given by theta J, that is the temperature of the jacket, uh, uh, the, the jacket temperature minus the liquid temperature. It will be given by theta J minus theta L. So that is now what we have. And this is now the difference temperature between uh, the jacket and the liquid at a time interval. So this one uh, is the difference at a time interval delta T, at a time interval delta T. And if we write that in terms of equation, then we'll find that change in Q, that is delta Q, which is uh, the amount of heat, uh, will be given by delta Q, will be given by one over R, because they are such that uh, the, the quantity or, or the heat, the amount of heat is always uh, directly proportional to the resistance. and this one times the difference in the temperature, which is now theta J minus theta L, and then all this is multiplied by delta T. All that is multiplied by delta T. But uh, from the heat balances equation, we, we know that change in theta L will be equals to, any change in theta L will be equals to uh, change in Q all over C whereby uh, the change in Q all over C is now the quantity 
or the heat divided by the capacitance. So in that case, uh, where C, we can define C, where C is the thermal capacitance of the liquid, where C, we can talk of where C, where C is the thermal capacitance, capacitance of the liquid, where C is the thermal capacitance of the liquid. So if we have all that, we can now rearrange this equation using all these particular expressions. So uh, rearranging the equation, we can talk of rearranging the equation. If we rearrange the equation, rearranging the equation. So if we rearrange this equation, you'll find that uh, in that case, we are going to replace. We know that uh, uh, change in Q, in this case, we know that, so we know that from this equation, we know that change in Q, change in Q will be also equals to, uh, will also be equals to C, or we can say that uh, change in Q here will be this times that, so we can say that it is change in Q, uh, change in theta L times the capacitance, so we can simply say that it is change in theta L times the capacitance, change in theta L, theta L times the capacitance. So we can use that in order to rewrite this particular equation. And when we do that, then also, now this is what change in Q is. So it means that this one can come here and rewriting the equation. Uh, just. And when we rewrite the equation, we can now see that uh, in this case, uh, RC, whereby we are going to have this one now, we can now say the whole of this expression will now be changed in, so we can see that RC, RC, the R here, multiplying uh, that, multiplying change in Q, which change in Q will now be that one, so it is RC, uh, we can say it is RC, change in theta L over DT, over change, change in theta L, over change in T, so we are going to have that, plus theta L, plus theta L, so if we rearrange this, then that is what uh, we are going to have, plus theta L, and then in that case, that one will be equals to theta J, that is equals to theta J. If you look at that, then this one just looks like a differential equation, we know that theta, that is going to give us a DDT and that. So this one we can still rewrite it in terms of uh, 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 the differential equation and then they take the Laplace transforms. So taking Laplace transforms, we know that this is change. So we have RC, so in that case it becomes RCS. RCS, uh, RCS theta L plus theta L, of course, all these are now in S domain. This one was still in time domain. So if you have that, then this one will be equals to theta J also in S. And then we can now collect the like terms, so theta L of S into R C S plus one. And then that one is equals to theta J. And remember, when we talked about this, we did say that uh, the input we talked about the input and the output, and we did say that uh, uh, the input is the jacket temperature, whereas the output is the liquid temperature. So the input is the jacket temperature, and the output is the liquid temperature. So it's going to be the output over input, that is what Laplace transform is all about, over theta, uh, theta L over theta J, which is now going to give us one all over R C S plus one. And with that, you shall have obtained the transfer function of that particular chemical, uh, of that particular uh, thermal system. So we can look at uh, the second example. So the second example is there for a liquid level system shown below. Obtain the governing mathematical uh, model where uh, QI is the inflow rate of the liquid in uh, meter cube per second, Q 
out, Q, QO is the outflow rate of the liquid in meter cubes per second. And then uh, HO, H0 is the height of the liquid in meter cube. And then uh, delta is the change in the respective values. So when you want to, to, to carry out or to solve this, then the first thing that uh, you need to look at is uh, you should ensure that uh, you show that the tank is actually supplying the liquid through an outlet under steady con state conditions. And under steady state conditions, it means that QI will be the same as Q out. So you consider under steady state conditions. Steady state conditions. So you see that QI, which is actually the inflow rate of the liquid, should be equal to the outflow rate of the liquid in meters uh, cube uh, per second. So after looking at that, then you will also find that uh, also H, uh, HO, that is uh, the height of the liquid in meters cube, uh, is uh, again uh, under, under this, uh, under the steady, the steady liquid in the tank, uh, you can also have, you can also say that let the change in QI, uh, where QI is the inflow rate, be uh, the small increase in the liquid flow rate at which it causes uh, change in Q, a change in H1, change in HI to be a change in HY in the liquid rate. So in that case, uh, we are going to look at, uh, we can simply say that a change in Q out or change in, uh, change in Q naught. So can say that change in Q naught will be equal to, that is still under steady state, change in H the change in the height over R will be the same as change in the height all over R. So in that case, if you talk about the liquid flow balance equation, then it means that the rate of flow uh, minus, the, the rate of inflow minus the rate of outflow will be equals to the rate of liquid storage. So in this case, we can simply say that the rate of uh, inflow, the rate of liquid inflow, so still under steady state, rate of liquid inflow minus the rate of liquid outflow, the rate of liquid outflow minus the rate of liquid outflow should be equals to, that one should be equals to the a rate of liquid storage in the tank. This one should be equivalent to or equals to rate of storage liquid in the tank. Rate of storage liquid in the tank. And then this one, if we put it in terms of the equation, we can simply say that uh, uh, change in Q1, uh, change in QI, not Q1, change in QI, minus, uh, you can talk of change in QI. So, change in QI minus, change in QI minus uh, change in uh, H over R minus change, this one here, minus change in H all over R will be equal to, minus change in H over R will be equal to, uh, there is the aspect of the capacitance and also the resistance where R will be the capacitance, R will be the resist, uh, resistance and H uh, and C is the capacitance. So this one will be the same as uh, C, the capacitance, uh, they will they be the aspect of the capacitance, it will be the, the same as C, uh, D, D into C, D into change in H over DT change in H all over DT, change in H all over DT. And in that case, uh, uh, where R is the resistance of the outlet pipe and C is the capacitance. Where R, where R is the resistance, resistance, uh, we, and this is actually the resistance uh, of outlet pipe, and this is the capacitance of the tank. Resistance of the outlet pipe, and C is the capacitance of 
the tongue. And with that, you shall have obtained because what we, were need, what we needed to get is the mathematical model. So the mathematical model is already here and that is now the differential equation. And that one is now what you are required to, to, to get as far as that one is concerned. You are just required to come up with the mathematical model of that particular system. So that is uh, much as far as uh, the transfer function of the thermal systems are concerned. So what you need to, to, to understand especially when you are talking about the thermal systems, then one major thing that you need to know, talk about is the heat balances. You must ensure that the heat is balanced. That is why we talk of steady state condition, which means the quantity of heat that is lost will be equivalent, or we, no, not equivalent actually, but will be equal to the quantity of heat that is gained by the, the, by the other system because there will be a transfer and that one will bring about the heat balances. And in this case, you, should, you always consider that there are no losses. So, so far, so good. That is much uh, as far as the thermal systems are concerned.